Jeff, welcome. I think it's so interesting. You've got a large share of doctors and nurse practitioners on your platform, but there's something going on with, is it pharma marketing spend that's really the issue here? Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me, John. And obviously a tough day for us as we beat yesterday on revenue and profit, but we had to lower our top line uh, by 6%. Um, yeah, as you say, we work with all of the top 20 pharmaceutical companies and all the top 20 hospitals. At Doximity, we're building the physician cloud. So we help over 80% of US physicians digitize their practice with telehealth tools, e-signature schedules, uh, and keeping up on the latest treatments. And yeah, the surprise for us here is, you know, healthcare is known to be recession resistant. So while we still expect to grow 25% this year on the top line, we were surprised by a bit of a slowdown, a bit of a macro headwind this quarter. So it seems that healthcare isn't immune to macro, but at least we are fully vaxxed uh, as a 6% top line hit is, is less than some other industries. So tell me about plans for diversification in your model as well. A lot of that tilted toward marketing. There are also things like recruiting challenges within uh, your, your customer set. Where are you growing? Where are you investing? Is your plan to stay largely structured as you are? Yeah, no, it's a great question. Actually, the bright spot this last quarter for us was actually our hospital business and around uh, recruiting as physicians are getting back on planes, going out and catching up on all that deferred maintenance these past few years. Uh, and so we're really proud to help doctors with that, finding the best opportunities as they find their new normal. Uh, we also did great with our hospital clients uh, with our telehealth product, which uh, had over a third of all U.S. physicians now on our enterprise platform and did over 200,000 telehealth calls per workday this past quarter. So those are our bright spots. You're right, on the pharmaceutical side, we are seeing, again, a bit of that headwind as, as there's a bit of belt tightening. Uh, but you know, there, our main cycles actually aren't mid-year, they're, they're end of year. And so again, it's a 6% hit to our top line. And our bottom line is still very strong. Uh, mm -hmm. We're expecting 43% EBITDA margins for the year. And we did $43 million in free cash flow last quarter, which was nearly half our revenue. Jeff, I keep hearing that uh, telehealth, you know, the trend had been, of course, spiking upward during the thick of the pandemic, but it's actually come back down. People are going in person back into offices. Uh, are you seeing that with how your technology uh, is playing out? And to what degree are you investing in a future where you expect telehealth to spike again or grow significantly? Well, I mean, we're still hiring, we're investing a lot. We think healthcare has a long ways to go in digitization and telehealth is this last quarter is actually our first full quarter in the United States of what we hope is new normal, right? No major outbreaks or major lockdowns. And again, we saw a slightly up, upward trend in telehealth visits, again, over 200,000 per day in the quarter. And what we're seeing really is working with telehealth is not so much maybe that first visit, but those follow-on visits. So we serve, you know, Main Street hospitals and clinics. And while you may see the doctor for that upfront visit, that follow-up visit is so much more convenient, saves the patient a couple hours of driving and waiting in a crowded patient waiting room to just do that 10 or 15 minute follow-up check-in visit via telehealth. So we're seeing telehealth, I think, continue uh, to grow uh, among this Main Street hospital uh, and, and clinics.